The first thing you're thinking, you're like, wow, <laughs> all right. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're not expecting that. Like, And I remember one day I was just sitting with um, with my family. We were eating dinner and uh, they just said, yeah, lass, uh, if you want to, you can go to England in a few months on trial at this Stoke City. And I was just mind blown. Like, this is insane sort of thing. Just like being in there, seeing all these like big stars that I've been watching on television. Was, like seeing Peter Crouch and all them once. Boge, I remember Bojan, I was a big Barcelona fan before. And he was there and I was just like, well, what's happening here? Like, that's so surreal. Everybody in Lincoln was so polite. So that's why I enjoyed it. It's so nice to meet new people and just have a little chat because, you know what I mean? Like as much as, like I love playing football, but they love being a fan of the club as well. So it's unbelievable. I know everybody's obviously going to say it's unbelievable. But I genuinely mean like Lincoln's fans is like really, really good. When I, Even when I speak to some of my mates on the other teams, they always, when they play here, they're always like, oh, your fans are unbelievable. I'm like, yeah. They're like, are they always like that? I'm like, yeah. I can see myself enjoying other things than football when I'm done. But uh, it's a bit early saying now as I'm 23. Maybe I'm opening a coffee shop and just making coffees all day. Well, if, if I do, please somebody come and drink my coffee if I do in Lincoln anyway. Well, hello there and welcome to the We Are Imps podcast. Today's guest is a bit of a fan's favourite. He's probably the fittest athlete in the city. He's also a PFA community champion. He set up Peter Grouch's last ever Premier League goal. And more importantly than that, he scored one of the best goals this club has ever seen. It is, of course, Lass Sorensen. Lass, thanks very much. You're our first player on the We Are Rims podcast. Yeah, I'll take that and some intro as well. I appreciate that. So, uh, no, it's a pleasure. Pleasure to be here. I'm happy and I'm um, looking forward to it. Yeah, we'll try and do you justice. <laughs> well, no, but uh, yeah, looking forward to it. That goal then that I mentioned, not the one that you set up Peter Crouch, by the way. We'll come <laughs> on to that in a bit. But that one you scored. What is going through your mind, A, when you've hit it? And B, how many times have you been reminded of it since? Well, first, what went through my mind, I don't know, it just goes so quickly. Actually, if you look it back, I think I've said it before, but it's actually quite funny because I actually turned my back to the to the, with the goalkeeper's kicking the ball. I've got my back to it and Regan Poole uh, shout, last turn around and I turn around and then everything there just goes quickly. But when I hit the ball, you sort of know it's going in. You could see it straight away. So so I enjoyed that. I enjoyed those few seconds. But, um, but no, I've been reminded quite a lot about it, but, uh, but I'd rather do that than I being reminded of a bad thing so I've really enjoyed it how much are you enjoying your your newfound freedom playing for this club you've you've moved positions slightly as well how did that come about and how much has it benefited you um well how it came about it was sort of it, I didn't know anything about we were playing MK Duns at home and uh and I think TJ was struggling a bit I was on the bench and uh then Gaffer just came to me and said, I think it was just two minutes into the second half, he's like, Les, um, go and warm up, but you're coming on as a right wing back. And uh, first thing you're thinking, you're like, wow, <laughs> all right. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're not expecting that. Like, I was obviously thinking I'd probably come on as a midfielder, but but then as anything in this sort of what we do with football, you just sort of take it, don't you? So I went out warming up thinking, Les, you better go in there and actually do half well, otherwise you look a bit stupid. So I came on and uh, it sort of went all right. I mean, I was happy with it and I think they were happy with it. And, after that, I've just, just played there and really enjoyed it. And uh, as you say, it's a new position, but it's um, it's not as I have to do so many different things there. I'm sort of just playing the same way I've always been doing, just in a little bit different position and uh, been enjoying that. I love the fact that you say it went all right. And, <laughs> and I can tell by the way that you're talking about the goal as well. You're obviously a very modest character. Is that something that's that's always been a part of your character? Um, well, I don't know. Like, I just feel like it's sort of, you know, I mean, it's just better describing it a bit relaxed than saying oh, all these sort of things. So, uh, no, I, I, I don't know. I've always been sort of a little bit calm and just taking it as a go sort of thing. And yeah, stuff like this. Yeah, so just like... Did you always want to be a professional footballer and tell us about what it was like growing up in a in a small in a small fishing port town as well, or you were close to a, a yeah, small yeah. fishing port town. Tell us what it was. And I guess the obvious question, why not a fisherman? And why did you become a footballer? Yeah, so now you're right. So basically, when did I start? When did I want to be a footballer? I sort of never really thought I want to be a professional footballer. But I think when you're young and all you do every day and the only thing you sort of really enjoy is to go out and um, play football with your mates and in your spare time just playing football. So I was doing that and all of, I was coming from this fishing town. I, just, I was actually outside it, but you play for your, your local club. But then when I came, became 13, uh, I moved in there and 
it's not not until you turn like 15 16 you start realizing i can actually sort of do this full time and uh so you sort of just come naturally and then yeah that was basically it but it was at the age of 15 or 16 where you signed for stoke and am i right in saying you had trials for them previously as well so it's such a young age how does someone deal with that did you quite realize the magnitude of that at that time um no like as i said like i was playing for esberg uh, at the time and i was 14 i think it was well i was 14 at the time and uh, it wasn't like thinking i was just really happy to be i was like thinking i was mind blown that i could go from where i lived to just play for esberg it's only like 40 45 minutes away and i was just mind blown like this is insane sort of thing i was so i was enjoying it so much and uh and I remember one day I was just sitting with um, with my family. We were eating dinner, and uh, they just said, um, "Yeah, lass, uh, if you want to, it's your decision. But if you want to, um, you can go to England in a few months on trial at this Stoke City." And I was just like, "I was like, what?" Like I remember I was just like so shocked. I was like, "How?" Like I didn't know any. I didn't even know that was possible at the time. But obviously, agents has been speaking to my family and been like, "Oh, this is an opportunity." And uh, and yeah, so this is what sort of what it, what it was. It was not even it wasn't even a trial to to get in or anything. They basically just said like, let's go over there, get the experience of what it actually takes. Because you might think you are a decent player here, but there is a whole nother level to like this football thing. And if you go over there, you can see this is what it takes. And uh, and yeah, so it went from there. I went on trial, didn't think anything of it, but I must have done something right on that on the trials or on the experience. I'd rather say than the trial than they went and, and signed me. Interesting you mentioned your parents there and said that they said to you, essentially, take it or leave it. Do whatever you feel, even at that age. Because as we know in football, there are a lot of pushy parents. And then the flip side of that is there are some parents who actually don't want their players to give too much to football on the off chance that they don't make it. So it seems like yours were in between. Um, yeah, they're not pushy at all. They've never been like that. They have been very, very supportive like unbelievable support if like obviously they were um they would always like drive me to the game they've always been watching me but never any push or anything like never I've, if i've had a bad game come and be like oh that's that's not good all that stuff never anything like that always been supportive and always just said listen do whatever you can do and if you want it you obviously got to work hard for it so don't think everything just comes naturally but do what you can do so so it was the same there so they were just like this is an opportunity Oh, you've got this opportunity to go over there, but if you listen, if you don't want to go over there and, and see it, that's fine. Stay home, but if you want to listen, go ahead and uh, and yeah. So so always been very supportive, and I think that's that's probably the best way way for me. It has been anyway. So uh, really appreciate it of that, of course. So you moved to Stoke at sixteen, and you move in with a a host family yes. in Staffordshire. Yes. Was that a daunting prospect? Because you're not just moving in with another family in your own country. Yeah. You're moving in with another family abroad. How did you find it? Um, good. Very different. But just, but it was a really good step for me because I, I'm a very family guy. Um, but to be fair, the, just before I moved there, I lived on my own sort of for six months in Denmark because obviously I was living this little town outside. So I moved in there. So I had a little sneak peek of how it is to be on your own sort of thing. But no, I moved in with them. It was, uh, they've been great to me and it was really good. But it's just obviously at that age, going into another culture, even though it's quite similar to the Danish culture, but they're still different. The language is a big difference, but they, um, no, they're really good towards me. They uh, really helped me and was like, a really good family they took me in were really nice to me and uh, don't have anything bad to say about them at all so it's been really good good experience and football wise what was it like going from a club like Iceberg have yeah. I pronounced that correctly yeah that's fine that's fine <laughs> I work on my Danish um, <laughs> sorry to Stoke because this is at the time anyway a Premier League club with Premier League standards did you feel like every day you had to be on your A game yeah but it was that was probably the most mental thing so like obviously but when you're so young, so like I was so unexperienced in terms of what it took to be like a footballer and all that stuff. So, so just me being in there, like I've always been a guy that works, try to work the hardest I can. So that was not really any problem. But just like being in there, seeing all these like big stars that I've been watching on television for like the past few years before that. And it was like, 
and I love football, so I've been like that guy sitting with magazines and all that. So like just, you know, I mean, looking at like different stories. And so it was all of them see them in real life. It was like seeing Peter Crouch and all of them once. Bojan, I remember Bojan, I was a big Barcelona fan before and he was there and I was just like, oh, what's happening here? Like, that's so surreal. But but no, it obviously, that also shows you like what it takes because not just it's not just me coming in. It's every year there was a trial every week, probably two trials every week at, at the young age group. So so for you to get in, you're quite lucky, but to stay in is probably even harder to get in because there's so much competition. So, so that probably teach me a lot about what, like, don't take anything for granted because if you think this is so easy, you you out next week. You know what I mean? Like that. That's just how it is. It's quite a ruthless, ruthless um, business. Even though you're only 16, it's it's the same as the first team level. Like if you don't perform, you out. So uh, so yeah. Do you have to adapt quickly then? Because you're essentially a little bit <clears throat> starstruck by the sounds of it. And I certainly don't blame you. You go there, particularly when you're looking at a former Barcelona player. Mm. Do you have to go from being, like I said, starstruck to almost competing with these players? Have, you have to switch the mindset, don't you? And go, okay, yes, I'm still a young player. I'm mm. younger than them, mm. but I'm going to have to start competing with these players if I want to get in the side. Yeah, like obviously it come naturally because in the beginning, I was I was just more seeing them like I wasn't even thinking that they're my competition really in the beginning you sort of compete at the 18s and uh, well I came over as a 16 but so then you're just competing there but eventually when you start sort of getting into being like about 18 19 well I was 18 at the time and you start training with them then so then you sort of thinking well like these are the players I need to at least just be nearly as good as do you know what I mean like or just trying to not be bad in training or anything like that so uh, but no it's it, it's crazy but when you're in that environment all the time it sort of just becomes a bit that's what you do sort of thing you just don't think so much about it. it's more now when i'm sitting and thinking like that's what i was thinking at the time but it's um if anything that's just a really good experience to look back at so to have to do that and i'm sure you don't want to be known and and when you do look back on your career i'm sure You'll achieve far more than being known as the guy that set up Peter Crouch's last <laughs> ever anyway. Premier well, League Well, I'll goal. take it. But I mean, it's some, some, some <laughs> but anyway. it's it's still an impressive accolade. Yeah. Uh, tell us, tell us about it, and you know, maybe you maybe a couple of dealings that you've had with with Peter Crouch over the years. Obviously, a big character. Yeah, no, he was. He was uh, obviously I was a young player, so and I was always trying to be really respectful towards them because I was seeing them and so I mean I was not going around making fun of that because I respected them so much and looked so much up to them so you obviously when you're in that situation you, you are like you know I mean not, you don't want to do anything wrong with these sort of big stars or whatever you want to want to call them but but no he was uh, what I remember of him and all that stuff he was exactly what you see now when he do all his amazing podcasts and all that stuff like he was exactly the same there so uh, it was really nice to watch me uh, and yeah don't have anything to f- bad to say against him but yeah I'm quite happy to set off his goal if, if anything but uh, that's a little funny thing to say but I was quite lucky to be fair because I remember we were playing the game and um, we always do set pieces you do that every single club and uh, I was I was on set pieces there um, in swingers and corners and white free kicks in swingers and uh, I remember going over there but we had Sheard and Shakiri at the time and um, he was like taking the ball and I, you know, I mean 18 year old I'm not saying Shaq I'm on the paper like it's it's my so I just went over there and he was like oh that's what you're doing I was like well I think I'm on the paper oh and he just gave me the ball so that's quite nice of him so if he didn't give me the ball he could easily just say I'm taking this and tell this young guy to go the other way but he was quite nice gave me the ball so uh, and after that a bit lucky but I'll take it one of the nicest men in football Shadan Shakiri. Hey, yeah, unbelievable yeah yeah so no yeah exactly such a nice guy man so as you say easier for him to just say now nah, I'm taking this but he was like no no you take it you take it I was like thank you <laughs> so you're beginning to hit your stride really at Stoke or certainly feeling like you are in particular as a young player I know you've still got a lot of development to do but lockdown hits did that affect you personally did it affect what you might see as your development on the pitch or or not um, I don't know. No, I, uh, no, I don't think so. Um, because uh, I got my debut, but I was still very young. So obviously, just because you get your debut doesn't mean you are playing after that every single week. So it's taking time. I was still improving. Had to do all stuff. But then lockdown actually happened, and before that, I was getting a little bit closer to it. But um, then lockdown happened, and that was after lockdown when we came back for those finish off the season was when I played probably my most time for Stoke's first team so I think I got six or seven games or something 
Um, so if anything, it probably bene- benefited me a little bit, the COVID thing. So, uh, so no, so uh, I just remember it as an enjoyable, t- well, not an enjoyable time, of course not, but for me personally, professionally, I, uh, I enjoyed those few months coming back in. Do you think it benefited you because you were able to perfect those running stats? Because <laughs> by the way, that is some list of names that, that you topped, the likes of Eddie Nketiah. Kieran Tierney, Jesse Lingard. I think <laughs> between the footballers, you had a leaderboard, didn't you? Yeah. And yeah. who was at the top of it? Yeah. So I don't know if it says I'm fit or whatever. I probably just say they probably have more of a life than me, if anything. So I don't know what, what it is. But no, yeah, I did that. But I always take pride in sort of doing the, doing the runs we're getting told to do. I feel bad if I'm sort of not doing it or anything. I've always been like that. So uh, so no, I do it and to the best ability I sort of can. And uh, if that tops the list, I'm happy for that. But reading up on you and, and some of the interviews you've done and some of the interviews that people have done about you. Your manager has spoken about you on a number of occasions. He's described you as a brilliant pro and a lovely man. I think Gareth Jennings was your academy manager back at Stoke as well, who spoke glowingly about you. Where do your values come from, do you think? Um, yeah, it's all my family. Like, I've, I've 100% think it's there. Um, I think they've always as I said earlier, been so supportive and really sort of told me what's right and wrong and all that stuff. And eventually you, um, that's sort of what, what makes you the person you are. But, but I also think, um, for, for me to obviously move to England at a young age, being 16, being through so many sort of changing rooms, a lot of different people, characters, um, nationalities. So you sort of like just see and you learn and you see, oh, he's like that. And, and eventually you sort of, pick up a little bit because your family is doing one thing but you're also getting influenced by your mates and all that stuff so so uh, so i also think just being knowing so many different people throughout the years and all that stuff makes you sort of grow into the person you are and all that stuff but not saying that's a good or, good or bad thing or whatever but i don't know i'm taking the praises if they're coming my way that's for sure you strike me as quite self-aware as well and i think a lot of younger footballers now are quite self-aware and they look at what they can do to improve themselves off the pitch as much as on it. Do you have any any habits that you try to stick to, whether it's listening to, I don't know, motivational podcasts, whether it's reading, whether it's anything like that, specific music? Is there anything out there that you do to make sure that you're in the best position that when you do get on that pitch, you know, you're at the top of your game? Um, yeah, um, I think obviously some are more than others, but I'm quite like, what do you call it? Ritual? I've got quite a lot of, not rituals, but just sort of things I like to do, uh, maybe before games and all that, just to get my in the right mindset or whatever. Um, whether it helps or not, I don't know, but I just feel like when you get to a certain level of maybe football or whatever, it's, um, it's a small details, isn't it? It's like what makes you ready to perform the most or what makes you in a mental state you're thinking I'm ready now I don't have to think about anything else I'm just thinking about the game and uh, for me it sort of over the years you just sort of do the same things that makes you in the in the zone and uh, so yeah I do that some do it more than others uh, I'm getting better at it because I feel like it's uh, also a little bit silly sometimes but uh, I'll come that'll come but no I like to to sort of or do that but on a daily basis that's more before games but on a daily basis i'm not really so much um so much i'll just like to i'm quite steady in the way i live my life so it's not that i go from one extreme to the other all the time i'm just sort of every day is sort of quite basic compared to what i do so yeah and you enjoy your coffee as well don't you oh. Bertie tells me that you're looking to get booked into a barista course i am they I mean, that's let... not full time by the way because oh, we need you on the pitch yeah we do but oh, you won't might open a coffee shop soon. I love it that much. So, uh, nah. Well, if if I do, please somebody come and drink my coffee. If I do in Lincoln, anyway. But yeah, I love my coffee. Uh, well, okay, saying this, I'm not a fanatic, but uh, no, I like as I say here in Lincoln. Uh, I like going for coffees, meet people, just chill out, and instead of just sitting because I live here on my own. Uh, so obviously my family. I've got a lovely girlfriend, but she lives in Denmark, and uh, so I just here on my own a lot. So I, instead of just sitting sitting at home and do nothing. I like to go for coffee. So I do make coffees at home as well, but it's the it's the coziness and the the whole thing about going for a coffee I like. I like how you said you're not a fanatic, but <laughs> someone has outed you and said that you've, <laughs> your wallpaper is a coffee that you make. Is that right? Is, your phone is, wallpaper. Is, is, is. No girlfriend, no parents on the wallpaper. <laughs> yeah, they're not getting on my wallpaper. Well, 
it's it's a coffee. Yeah, it's my it's my homemade coffee on my yeah yeah it's but it's actually because I got battered. So before that, compared to my my rituals a little bit, I used to have the same background for about probably about six or seven years. Me on my first game for Stoke on trial, it's like, and I was well, fourteen at the time. But I'm I don't know. I don't I'm not bothered about it. I just, so I just had it for so many years, and um, <laughs> some of the lads at, at the training ground they. Uh, they went on my phone and uh, they changed the lock screen to something I probably shouldn't have on my lock screen anyway. And I thought, you know what, it's probably time to change it as well. And uh, so I, I thought, what what would make me happy to look at? Your girlfriend. Coffee. Well, no. of course, my girlfriend, <laughs> my family and coffee. So I choose coffee, anything. <laughs> so I choose coffee. So uh, yeah, wallpaper. You mentioned before that you, you sometimes get recognized in town. You've, you've said that it's due to your bright blonde locks. Um, do you enjoy that aspect? Do you enjoy getting recognised as a footballer? Because I imagine, and particularly, I know I mentioned it at the top, you are one of the fans' favourites. So anytime that someone sees you in the street, I imagine it's positive. Yeah, well, uh, yeah. going back, like I, I really enjoy being recognised when I do. It's not as, as soon as I step my foot outside the door, people are, of course not. But but no, I really enjoy it. Um, when I go around town and speaking to new people, or fans come up and say oh well done at the weekend or unlucky in the weekend whatever because obviously some periods throughout the season is better than others but but this is well, we'll probably get into it but with without um but here in lincoln this is the good thing about lincoln is in my time i've never met anybody being like very critical or come and be like oh all that stuff so so it's all very positive everybody in lincoln is so polite so that's why i enjoy it it's so nice to meet new people and just have a little chat because you know what i mean like as much as like i love playing football but they love being a fan of the club as well so we can just talk about about that you seem very settled in this city because mm -hmm. a lot of footballers will play for a city football club but have never ventured into the city center. But, you know, as you mentioned there, you love a, a stroll around town, probably a walk past the cathedral and the castle, I imagine, and heading into 200 degrees coffee, as we know. Why do you like to buy into the area of a city? And what is it about this city that you like? Um, I just think it's important. Like, I just I just feel like the community, the whole thing of just getting, getting, um, getting it all together is just quite important. And I just enjoy being in and like... I just enjoy meeting new people and so I, I just like Lincoln the way it the whole city is and the people are so so polite and um, and I just think it's a sort of very it's a busy city with people but it's also very quiet and it's so it's a bit of both and it's a really good mixture of that which I just which I just enjoy. What about on the pitch then we've spoken a little bit about your position and how that has changed we are now into the following season we're we're a month or so into it what about this group of lads that you're playing with? You seem to get on really well. Do you get that feeling when you're with them, both, both whether it's socially or on the pitch? Uh, yes, I, I feel I feel like the the group uh, is a really good good group. Like I feel like we all get on with each other, and and as much as it's important to obviously perform on the pitch, which we have to do, but you can only really perform on the pitch if you get along. Like that's just quite simple. Like there's a sort of the better group and the better group yeah group of lads you've got the better it is to perform because it takes a whole team throughout the season to to um to do well and uh and now obviously the, quite a few of the lads was here last season as well and we know each other better now after a year and it keeps getting better so it's just a very nice settled group and we're quite young we're quite we're about the same age most of us anyway so so it, it's sort of just very chill you just go in and have a laugh with your mates and play a bit of football and that's that's really what it is something seemed to change around maybe 70 percent of the way through last season was that the market it was uh, ironically it was around about the time that your position changed but <laughs> were those not in a good way like, like, <laughs> let's, well, let's well, say that um way. Is that the marker now for the performances going forward? Is that something that you can say, look, we can do this. We can beat Ipswich away. We can play like this against Plymouth. We can do these against the big sides or the sides towards the top of the table. Anything is possible. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, I think on a whole, we had a really good season last season, but I think, I think we, um, we finished off very strongly and uh, and that's definitely set the bar because we can do that. And I even think we can do even better than that because I think we got decent results and we played really well. But I actually think we 
can probably play a little bit better in some of the games. So, but of course, that's what it is. So you, you always set the bar, and as well as you do over a number of games, then you know, okay, this is the level we can be at. So now we just need to take it a step further, and uh, and that's obviously the aim. That's always the aim, and we will do everything we can to do that, of course. And um, so yeah, looking forward to that. What about the fans then playing in front of them, both home and away? Because you've had some brilliant ovations mm. from some of the away performances that you've played. Uh, certainly last season, there were some unbelievable away performances from all of you and you were rightly rewarded with great adulation from the supporters. What is it like to play for them both home and away? It's, it's unbelievable. I know everybody is obviously going to say it's unbelievable, but I genuinely mean like Lincoln's fans is like really, really good. Um, when I, even when I speak to some of my mates on the other teams, they always, when they play here, they're always like, oh, your fans are unbelievable. I'm like, yeah. They're like, are they always like that? I'm like, yeah, they, they actually are. Like, they always turn up every week at home and even away as well. Like, that's really appreciative how many numbers we always bring. And uh, you can always guarantee they're always singing and supporting us, even though there's been games where it's been bad, but they're still there. So, uh, so no, it's really enjoyable. And uh, I feel like I've got a good relationship with them, which I'm really appreciative of. And uh, I know I always say the same thing. I spoke to Lucas when he when he signed the obviously the, the Danish keeper. So he was texting me a, a few weeks before he signed. And he also asked me, like, what's the fans like? And I just said they're unbelievable. I didn't have to sort of... Um, so I'll say too much more because it's just you just have to experience it and then you make your own mind up. But no, they're really good. It sounds like we've got you to thank for, for getting <laughs> Mr. Jensen into the team as well. <laughs> no, by the no, looks of it. Uh, not 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 too sure if it's if it's me, but uh, but he's someone you know, obviously. Um, I didn't actually I didn't actually know him before. You know, often, but I'd, I've never spoke to him or anything um, or anything before, but. I spoke to him a little, like two minutes after the Atkinson game, but but that's it. So it's just because we're from the same country. I didn't really know him before, but he's a very nice guy and uh, and uh, hopefully he's settling in well at Lincoln. Just on those fans, does it give you extra energy when you hear when you hear loud support? And actually, Stoke were were quite well known for it as well, weren't they? Does it give you extra adrenaline when you can hear them chanting in the stands? Yeah, yeah, no, it does. It does, of course. Like it, it always gives you an extra lift, and you can definitely feel sometimes, which is quite natural in a game. If you are on top of of the game, fans always give you that extra push, and they really do. And or if you sometimes are hanging on in a game, which we've done plenty of times as well, it gives you that extra bit of okay, we can do this, like the extra bit of energy. So no, of course it does, and. I'm quite lucky and fortunate to have my, my own song sometimes when, and when they sing that as well, they sort of like gives you an extra lift as well. And uh, and of course, it's just it's just nice and uh, gives you that extra bit of energy. So what can this team achieve then? You alluded to it a little bit there, that what we've seen so far is perhaps just the start. You think, which is great to hear, by the way, that, that this team can go on to bigger and better things. Are you looking at it from a perspective that actually we really should be going for promotion now? This team is capable of doing that. What is the the pinnacle, if you like? Um, yes, I, like I thought when you look at us last season, uh, we finished 11th and I think we definitely could have sort of got a little bit higher up if you, if you look over the whole season and, and there's no reason this season we can't do any better but it's also one of them you also have to respect the league as well because it's such a tough league, everybody can win against each other, everybody can lose against each other so just because you might look at it and think you know, it's a bit more even sort of on the whole league doesn't mean that just because you had a good season last season means you you will have an unbelievable season next season again like it's, it doesn't work like that in league one so uh so it's always easy to say what you think before the season but you just have to it's so cliche to say but you just have to look at the next game ahead and then trying to win that and see where it takes you at the end of the season but but no hopefully like i feel like we've got a good group and uh hopefully we can uh, do very well this year now we mentioned before and i alluded to it that you strike me as quite a self-aware person. Have you, and you are young, but have you had a chance to think about life after football yet? We discussed it before. And I said to you just off camera, would you ever consider being a manager? You didn't rule it out. Yeah. So is, is coaching something you think you could go into? Um, yes, like I, I do enjoy, well, I can see myself enjoying it, but I feel like it's also one of those things when I'm 23 now, hopefully having a lot of years in football. So maybe if you become at your older age in football, are you thinking I've had enough with, about this football and you don't want to do it anymore? You never know. It could also be that it keeps growing on you and you want to do it even more. So I think about the coaching thing, I'm just going to wait and see what happened and uh, focus on the football for now anyway. But if I don't know if I've got any other um, plans. I've Actually, last season I was studying a little bit. 
uh, to a lot of laugh from the boys at the training ground. <laughs> but no, I was um, I I always feel like it's good to take your mind away from football sometimes, like because it's so intense throughout the season and and uh, it happens so many things throughout the season. So sometimes I just used. Um, it's not a lot of educated, but I was studying a little bit and uh, to take my mind away from it. And uh, I did enjoy it. And I can see myself enjoying other things than football when I'm done. But uh, it's a bit early saying now as I'm 23. Maybe I'm opening a coffee shop and just making coffees all day. That would probably be a thing. Well, you've got options by the sound <laughs> of it. <laughs> we'll see. And anyway, my coffee shop, that's for sure. Tell us about the studying then. Uh, why were the lads giving you a bit of a bit of flack for it? And also... I guess, was it down to the fact potentially that whilst a lot of footballers would be off on their holidays to Dubai or Marbella or anywhere like that, you were in an exam hall, am I right in saying? Yes, I was uh, spending my summer sitting in a big um, what was it, gym hall, is that what you call it over here? Um, with about 50 other students and uh, writing on the computer for five hours. That was very intense. But uh, no, um yeah, I, I studied. It was just Danish. It was it's equivalent to your yeah. What is that? Your A levels, mm -hmm. probably GCSEs, A levels. Yeah, it like probably that. is. Yeah, something like it's yeah. something like that. Because obviously, I dropped out of school when I was four. Well, fifteen. I finished. It's a bit different then. So I haven't done any school since I was basically fifteen when I moved up sixteen. So <laughs> it's gone a bit quiet up there. So I need to sort of get my mind back into it. But um, but no, I enjoyed it. I think it's a, it's a good so that's thing. a decision you've made. You've for, for that solid reason that you feel like from an education point of view, mm. you've missed out essentially. You've um, had to sacrifice something, haven't you, to move over here? And you're actually yeah. and kudos to you have gone. Okay, I need to almost get that time back. Um, well. Yeah. The main reason was just purely because the season before I found out that you have so much spare time and if you think about football constantly, you get insane of you and you just drive yourself mad sometimes. So the, the only reason why I really did it was because I was think, thinking, okay, you need to find something that takes your mind a little bit away. And wherever that is, like it could have been. But I thought, you know what? Um, then I do a lot of these studying online also. I thought, you know what? I'll give it a try. And uh, so it's not really because of it, because I've always said I didn't really want to do it in the beginning, but I had a talk with my agent and all that stuff. And, and I said, obviously, football is my main priority. And there's never no way I'm like doing half of this football to do studying. Like, no way. So uh, I'm so very lucky to be in this position. But I thought, you know what, it's really good to, uh, to get my mind. So that was the main thing. But then I also thought, you know, what, it's not bad to do education if, if you've got the time to do it. So, uh, so it's sort of a a little bit about that, but mainly to get my mind off football sometimes. Yeah, really interesting that you say that because of course, football is life consuming, both for fans and players, but you also have a lot of spare time. Give us a bit of an insight into just what being a footballer is actually like. It is, is it as potentially crazy as it can see on the, on the outside? Is it the opposite? Because of course, there's only so many hours in the day that you can train. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, so training wise, it, it's not really because... I know a lot of people out there with um, nine to five jobs are obviously having sort of a tough. So I know we are very fortunate to have a very loose sort of job where it doesn't take a lot of energy out of it. But it's more mentally than anything. So that that's the tough bit. And it's a crazy, it's a crazy world. This football world sometimes, and it's a very unpredictable world as well. But so you might train for let's say one and a half hour and an hour gym. So that's two and a half hours. So when you look at that, that's, that's not a lot, but then that takes a lot of other, it takes a lot of other things. You've got meetings and I know that doesn't sound like a lot. It, it, it isn't really, but it's just more the, 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 the mental things you have to go through because there's so many games and you have to think about this and that. And, and, and because you care about it so much and you really want to do well, also because you want to do well for, all the fans that is following you as much as much for them as it is for us. So uh, it takes a lot of thinking, and so mentally it's probably more tough than anything else. Kind uh, time consuming, and uh, the most time consuming. I can't. What can I say? That? Time consuming thing is thinking about football and actually doing it. I think. And I've heard you enjoy your paddle tennis as well. I'm very. I'm a. I'm, by the way, I'm a big paddle tennis fan. So Unbelievable I'm with, sport. I'm with you on this. <laughs> One of the most upcoming sports, fastest growing in the world. I, I could talk about it for hours. Something you enjoy and have played back in Denmark, I presume, because it is very popular in Scandinavia. But yeah, something yeah. that is starting to grow here too. Yeah, yeah. Is that paddle tennis in Lincoln? Not yet. <laughs> I'm not doing a coffee. I'm doing paddle tennis. That's for sure. Now. Um, 
yes, it's just sort of, I really enjoy doing it when I'm off because it's sort of, it's just a fun sport you can do with your mates or you don't have to be at a very good level to play it. You can actually, don't, you can play it for the first time and still be half decent at it. So I was playing a lot with, with my mate at home and I was playing a lot with uh, my girlfriend and my girlfriend's got a sister um, who's also got a boyfriend. So us four, we were playing it against each other. So it's just all, all good fun. And it's just a laugh and I really enjoy it. Competitive laugh? Oh yeah, I'll tell you what, I'm not letting them wear us. I don't care, I'm trying to win every single time. Now you gotta you got have fun with it. So, uh, but no, very competitive always, of course. Listen, we've been going for a while now. We could talk all day and I'm sure we'll have you back on the podcast very soon to talk us through more incredible goals <laughs> and more incredible Hopefully. runs that you'll have no doubt put on throughout the course of this season. But really enjoyed your time. Lass and I are off to go and have a game of paddle tennis, I think. You'll probably... <laughs> beat me but uh, <laughs> not sure it's don't think a, so it's been a pleasure having you on the podcast my pleasure my pleasure thank you very much